give me just fledgling advice. I say, hey, Rhett, um, well, what's the best way I can play as EBZ? What would you tell me? Um, I'd definitely tell you to go 15 hatch. Um, it, it still has some problems against, yeah, like I said, 9 pool and 10 pool baneling. Uh, so like 14 to 14 is probably the, the safer option, but I think on ladder right now You would be best off doing doing 15 hatch because I think you know you, You're gonna be able to defend most most of the things people throw at you if they cheese you really hard Then then you might die, but it, it's a solid build in for like 90% of the games Okay, all right. Well, um, I'm ready to uh, To jump in and, and get some games going. I Don't currently have a Zerg online to play with us, so I guess you and me can just kind of trade some punches and maybe we can talk about the games and and, uh, and discuss the things that are supposed to be better. Yeah, that's that sounds good. Alright. Shall I host it up or would you like to? Uh, you can go pick whatever map I guess you'd like to play. Alright. All right, sir. I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Let's go. You picked a nice map, huh? Ling Bane Ling. Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do what you're telling me to do with this with this with this hatchery build. Um, right. So, do you want me to do something like Ling Bane Ling, or do you want me to? Well, you know, I'm gonna leave that at your discretion. Uh, just uh, you know, play play the map how you would play the map normally, and um, maybe as we're going, you can kind of obviously without giving away anything to me what, what you're doing. But maybe when I scout you, you can tell us a little bit about your thought processes. All right. Right now, my thought process is drones, drones, drones. Isn't that always your thought process? Pretty much. <laughs> that's my solid advice for ZVZ, snake drones. You know, honestly, that's something that I noticed in your games with Xenia was uh, how, how much you were droning. I was really blown away. I felt like uh, you were really putting yourself at a disadvantage. But, um, but you never died, you know? It's just like you defended and defended and defended, and then finally you had this economy that was just, you know, unstoppable, basically, and you just walked over the guy. Yeah, if it works, it looks really good. If it doesn't work, then it looks really bad. <laughs> and in what situations is it not going to work? What, what should we really be looking out for with this kind of build and this kind of aggressive droning? Well, there's like, you know, times where you both have a roach warren and, you know, you're not going to be able to scout very well with a small group of links and then you don't know, like, is he making a million drones or is he making a million roaches? Like, when is he going to attack me? You know, all that kind of stuff is like up in the air because, you know, you can never predict what the other player is going to do. So there are times where I'll, I will not be expecting an attack and then it turns out that the guy has been making roaches for the last five minutes and I've been making too many drones and he just moves out and kills me. Or there are times where, you know, I think the guy is making roaches so I'm making roaches but I'm not attacking because I just want to defend. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out he made like 80 drones and started roaches just a little bit later than me. and. I won't be able to catch back up in the economy game. Okay. Quick question. So that's um, when I'm doing this hatch first build. Uh, obviously, do I, I want to be drone scouting? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Really? I, I would not drone scout out with this build because your overlord will just will basically tell you everything you need. All right. And uh, uh, what kind of pool timing do we shoot for typically? Uh, I usually go with 15, 15. Okay, that's actually what I did too. So, awesome. On this map, you want to send your second overlord, like, kind of to the rocks that are in front of your base, because if he does, like, any super early spawning cool builds, then that's where the links will be coming from, so... You know, er, if you know early, you can cancel your hatchery and start a spine crawler in your, in your main. And do you feel that those, like, 9 pool, 10 pool banding builds, do you feel like they're even worth a damn? I kind of I kind of get the feeling that they really run out of steam after the initial banes. Yeah, they, they are really all in actually, but against 15 hatch they're super dangerous and I still often die to them when I'm 15 hatching. Okay. So here the expansion's up. Do I, do I, um, when do I get my gases and wh what do I do in terms of zergling speed? 
Uh, you should get your gas like right after you build your pool, and then you just get your zerging speed as soon as you have 100 gas, and you should have like four links to be scouting your opponent. And then what about second gases and third gases and things like that? Uh, they don't really come into play until much later, like when you're starting roaches. Okay. But you kind of want to know what your opponent's doing by the time your first two uh, larva injects are, are out, because that's like the crucial timing where either him or you could be making a, a shitload of units, and you need to know. All right. And what kind of uh, what kind of timings are we looking at on the roach warren and things like that? Um, well, I have four links near you, so I'm I'm not gonna make it till I feel like I need it. Right. Uh, which is like when you see, uh, when you first see bailings, I guess, or when you think bailings are gonna be ready. So basically, you're just playing completely passively until you feel like you're under some sort of pressure. Pretty much. But because of my, my zerglings near you, I should be able to tell, like, in time. Oh, here come quite a few speedlings. Now, is this is this uh, heavy speedling transition something that's normal for you? Uh, this is not really a lot of speedlings. It's just a couple I make in case you were b you were going mass speedlings, and mm -hmm. I can scout with these as well. And incidentally, it's far more than I made, and it's decisive and game-ending. In this case, uh, I would guess so, yeah. <laughs> in other words, where would it be bad, Mr. Bitter? But when you had your links in my base, you saw them pop, so if you would have just made like 10, yeah, then we would have been at a similar position in the game. So I guess this gives us a chance to talk about microing drones against Zerglings. How, what, what's, what approach should I take to that? Um... Well, what you want to avoid is, like, when lings are coming, you don't want to fight them in your mineral line because that's a really closed-off area uh, where, like, only a couple drones will fight against a couple links so you'll be losing. So when lings are coming, you want to pull your drones away from your minerals and then attack them, like, in an open area where as many drones as possible can fight. And, and we're not going to worry about lost mining time or anything like that? Uh, if your, your game life depends on it, then you shouldn't worry about it. Like it's better to lose a bunch, a bit of mining time than lose like five drones or I don't know whatever amount of drones. Right. So you said you made about you about I made about ten speedlings just right there initially. You, you mean How you come spent your your three? your speedling is so late? Because my gas was so late. Uh, my, I got my yeah, gas on get like your, uh, twenty-four. You need to get your <laughs> gas like. Right after your pool's building, or one drone after your pool's building. Okay. Because you want you want to speed as early as possible, because it's basically it's it's going to be your 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 eyes. The speedlings are going to be your eyes, and you need them to scout, and so you can adjust. I see that you got a macro hatchery down in your natural. Yeah, I have too much money. So that's a side that's effect. Something I of, usually uh, do. Okay, so it is a normal thing. And here they're the roaches, and that is actually going to be the end of it. So let's uh, let's actually go back and look at that replay, and uh, right. just watch it kind of from your point of view, because obviously I had not the best grasp on how that was supposed to go. So I'm loaded up and ready when you are. I'm ready. I'm just going to put it on the red cam and I'm going to watch it at probably times four. That sound good? Sounds good. All right, well, let's hit play. Go, go. And uh, just as, as we're kind of going through here, uh, maybe you can talk about the things you're doing and the times you're doing them and, and maybe a little bit of why. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's going to be me running around your natural links and trying to see what comes out of your eggs and then I make a couple more links just in case uh, th I, I, those basically decided the game I think you will need to get speed much much earlier yeah I'm not really quite sure like why some I guess so like we're some just people even play like 15 hatch and then 16 gas and then 15 bull 
uh -huh. just so they can get that speed earlier. But obviously that's really unsafe against uh, early rush builds. So I just get the gas after my pull. All right. But it shows how important speed is because whoever gets speed first is going to have map control and yeah and information. So speed is like very important. So out pop your first few zerglings. I did see him. I didn't respond to him. And yeah, this isn't even really to kill you. This is just like right. In case you are mass slinging me, I need those. Like I can't be making many drones, or I'll just be caught with my pants down. And uh, they're also good for scouting. So. So uh, mass slinging is a is not not a real bad build in ZBZ, is it? No, it's. I think it's the most standard follow up to fast expansion. Like. Everybody gets a lot of speed links uh, in fast expansion against fast expansion. And then some people will get a bailing nest and some people will get a roach warren. So you can play either one. So I'm going to pause here. I'm at 9.30. If there's any chances, you can just kind of pause around this spot. Uh, your, your macro hatchery is done. Your roach warren is finished. Your layer is finished. Um, and, and what I'm noticing here is um, kind of in... Um, I guess this is, what am I trying to say? The, the things that I see that you're doing are, are very different from things that I've seen other player players do when they play Roach. Uh, I see no Evo Chamber. Uh, I, I, your layer just finished, but there are no uh, Roach upgrades coming. Um, you know, wh what, what, is the, what is the mindset with the Roaches? Are they just there to kind of be tanks and let the Lings do damage? Um, yeah, well, it really depends on how the game is going. Like, if you're in an even game, and nobody killed anything with their first li lings and nobody's going all in and you're both kind of just joining up then you want to get like an, an evo or two evos preferably because once you're ahead in upgrades you know you're always going to be ahead in upgrades so it, it is really important uh... but as for this game um, well I, the game was over after the links so right. I, didn't, I didn't really mind like my, my build order after that but um, yeah normally you do get evo chambers in, in an even game you, you want to just get two of them because uh, it really helps when you're, you know, your first upgrades are going to finish. If they're faster than him, you get some kind of timing window where you can do damage. Mm -hmm. And then also the second pair of upgrades is going to be faster as well. So that that's like a huge advantage like throughout the game. So I would advise getting them normally. Uh, but yeah, this game, it just wasn't necessary, so I didn't. So can you talk to us about how your upgrade timings line up with your layer timing? Uh, I don't really have like a, a rule for it. I just do it like... On, on feeling basically mm -hmm. I, I will get maybe some games I will get two EVOs before my lair sometimes I will get them at similar timings uh, it just all depends on, on how the early game went but you just want to get them as fast as possible okay let's go back and talk about mass lane a little bit again um, it's, it's, it's very viable and very popular off of a fast expansion to go straight into just mass mass zerglings mm -hmm. um, with with your build, what is the what, what is your ideal response there? You're gonna have your lings in his face. You're gonna see, oh god, he's making a lot of lings. So then, what do you do after that? Then I just counter that by making a lot of lings as well, and by then my roach warren should be going up because I want to be ready in case he's going actually ling baneling, uh, which I want to counter with roaches. But I will just respond initially with making a lot of lings myself. So you're just gonna match the ling numbers until he does something until he until he transitions basically. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Okay. All right, cool. Well, let's hop out of here and maybe we can play another one and uh if uh now that I've got a little bit of an idea as to how that's supposed to go. Sure, let's do that. I had a jerk player lined up to play with us and he just went offline. That jerk. All right, so what I, I want to uh, 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 just a 3k zerg that you probably wouldn't know. J Echo.